the Code 3 Stingray was a halogen option uh, multifunction rotator, if you will, available in the 1990s from Code 3. It featured three major options, rear oscillate, full 360 degree rotation, and front fast oscillate. The option would set you back just under $150 for each unit. Uh, they were often purchased in pairs, but they could not be controlled in pairs. They were uh, single units with single brains to each one. Uh, they were sometimes marketed as being a good center option for a variety of light bars. They would put them in pretty much any light bar they made at the time. Uh, the exception being the MX-7000, which is really a partial exception. They would do it, but it came with a warning that you probably shouldn't do it. Um, there were some issues with the product working properly when uh, placed into an MX-7000 frame, which was uh, had a channel down the middle, um, which kind of got in the way of some maintenance. But it did work, and people were known to build entire MX bars out of these uh, as a multifunction rotator, they saw several generations of control brains. Um, they pretty much mirrored the Code 3 flashers of the time, whether that be the black epoxy or the clear box. Uh, the clear box was the initial first generation. The epoxied uh, version that looked like the later 710 and 700s uh, was the later version, and there was even a European and later version yet that came out with a little bit better quality epoxy, which you can see here. The idea behind the product was that you could get a multifunction rotator out of the components of a regular rotator. That is a regular 12 volt brushed motor with a worm gear turning a regular rotator, uh, no stepper motors, uh, no extremely complicated logic boards, uh, very rudimentary, uh, somewhat low-tech control for a multifunction light. So the rear oscillate function was uh, slightly slower uh, it was the base option that was the first option that came on. Uh, then the next wire would provide your 360 rotation, and the third wire would give you uh, your front oscillation. That way it could be hooked to a progressive slide switch, and you could do rear-only 360 and front pursuit type setups. Um, they worked... Uh, by using these uh, sensors and reversing the polarity on the DC motor. Unlike other Code 3 motors, the DC motor was isolated. It didn't ground to the frame. Um, the purpose of the brain box was to uh, sense the position of the light and then um, reverse the polarity of the motor uh, in a way such that it would do what it was supposed to do, whether that be rotate or oscillate. Um, reversing the polarity of a DC motor is by no means uh, a new concept, but the problem you run into is you need to figure out how to uh, get them to the position that you want. Just reversing the polarity of the motor uh, isn't going to end at the same spot every time. So. That's where the Y-shaped um, position sensors came in, uh, which were one of several failure points. But um, you can see from the worm gear spinning uh, back and forth in slow-mo here that uh, we were, in fact, just stopping and starting a... Uh, 12 volt DC brushed motor and reversing it. Uh, what that has going for it is that it's kind of a self braking system. You, with some very minor exceptions, you cannot spin a worm gear 
by spinning the regular gear of a rotator. So it kind of self breaks when you flop the polarity. Uh, is that great for the motor? No. Is it going to significantly shorten its life in a way that you're going to see in this sort of application? I also don't think it, it will. Uh, the failure point was primarily the uh, sensor wires or the position sensing wise. Um, on the rotator base was a single uh, tab or notch that connected to ground. And as the rotator head moved and the Y-shaped contacts would ground to that um, tab, that's how the system would sense the position of the light head. Now, keep in mind that these Y sensors while they technically make up four sensors, are really only connected to two wires or two inputs. So you really don't have four position sensors in the technical sense of the term. You have two outgoing wires, but kind of using four sensors, if you will. But they combine. So you've got a zero and a one. Um, the default direction for rotation is counterclockwise. Um, reversing the pol polarity obviously does the opposite. Um, to oscillate rear, the, I believe the uh, logic is ignore all zeros. Uh, go counterclockwise till you hit a one, then clockwise till you hit a zero, then counterclockwise till you hit a one. Um, and then the opposite for the other side of oscillation. Um, there are some caveats to that, but um, you also got to think that as soon as you start rotation, um, you go back into that ignore or pass both ones or zeros depending on what mode you're trying to use. So it's actually pretty ingenious that they're using that few really only two wires and four sensors to control this. Um, the lamp will revert back to its oscillating state um, by either completing its counterclockwise revolution or by returning in the direction it's supposed to depending on where that sensor pin is contacting uh, one of the uh, Y sensors. So uh, if you've gotten past the uh, color that it expects to do an oscillation then you're gonna get stuck into a rotation sort of program until the uh, in, until the light head makes contact with the correct color pin uh, for rotating and because the rotation direction is always the same you can set up a uh, program if you will of if this then that so that you're always going to get oscillation in the direction that you want and you're always going to reset to that direction um, if you've gone past your sensors for bringing it back in the direction from whence it came uh, in order to maintain oscillation. In this situation I've put a red line down the back of the reflector uh, which runs down to that ground pin um, and I've tried to mark out the uh, the Y sensors or the uh, position sensor wires um, with the blue and green tape um, kind of showing how they bifurcate and where they might end or start. It's kind of approximate, but as you can see, at a certain point, this rotator will just default into its 360 degree rotation 
which has its own logic where it won't stop until it hits uh, a certain color or a certain side um, based on what function you then try to activate. So if you are in rear oscillate and you hit rotate and you get past the point of no return, it's going to go into a rotation and it's going to use that logic to rotate it until you reactivate the oscillation. But if you should happen to catch it right before it crosses that plane, it will just return back as if it were oscillating in a slightly longer arc. Um, that's kind of an algorithm of not being 100% able to tell between the two sides um, 100% because they have uh, two pins each. Uh, so oscillating rear, again, you're going to ignore all of the zeros or the left in this case. You're going to rotate counterclockwise until your uh, position pin strikes a, a one or a right. Then you'll go counterclockwise until it hits the other, and you'll go back and forth that way. Uh, if you end up passing all of the correct side, you're going to go into a rotation, a counterclockwise rotation. Um, I made a little demo here, which is uh, very arts class, and it's uh, absolutely not uh, supposed to be of uh, diagnostic quality, if you will. But uh, it kind of shows how, in the different modes, the, um, the pin in the back is contacting and what it does. So, like in this case, yeah, it missed the first sensor because you put it in rotate, but it still had a sensor of that type or color, so it just reversed. Whereas, if you were to completely past that color sensor or that side sensor it's just going to go into a rotate and use the rules of rotation which will spin it around until it hits the same color again which if you think about it that makes the uh, the brain if you will a lot simpler there's a lot less if this then that um, you've really only got the uh, two oscillation modes and the counterclockwise rotation to take into account. And as long as your ground pin is touching one of the colors, it knows which way to send it. If it's touching none of the colors, then it's going to go into a counterclockwise rotation till it hits one slash two and then reorient itself um, again this was pretty ingenious in the sense that instead of using four position sensors you're using four position sensors tied into only two wire outputs um, and when using a grounding system to uh, communicate with your uh, rotator brain um, that could be helpful. As you can see here, we're ignoring that entire side because we went back into a rotation mode. And until the pin hits the color it wants, it's not going to start oscillating again. Otherwise, you would end up oscillating uh, in the wrong direction or facing the wrong direction. You can overextend a little bit by putting it into rotation mode, but as long as you don't pass the uh, sides sensors that you're supposed to, you're still going to oscillate back. Oscillating front's the exact opposite. Um, you're going to rotate counterclockwise, ignoring ones until you strike zero then you're going to start oscillating however if you pass both zeros uh, it counts as a restart and now um, the ones are ignored until you strike a zero um, again you can kind of see this in the rotator um, the 
pin might not really show how much the uh, the Y sensors widen at the base, so it might be a little confusing, but the long and the short of it is if you hit rotate while it's oscillating, depending on how far into the rotation cycle it gets, it's either going to continue rotating until it passes the opposite two sensors and hits the correct side sensor, or it's going to consider itself still in contact with the correct side sensor and simply reverse. And the reversing of the polarity in the uh, brushed DC motor is the way that it does that. The problem that people saw with these uh, really wasn't the motor burning out, and I don't think it was really the chips or the electronic components in the quote brain. It was really the contact uh, wires or wires uh, that contacted the ground um, stud or the ground pin in the back of the rotator that would end up having poor contact. And once you miss one of them, you get some peculiar behavior. Um, and once you miss two of them, eh, you can become completely non-functional. So what we're trying to display here is depending on at, one, at what point uh, you change from oscillate to full counterclockwise rotate and then back to oscillate, um, the position of the sensors may pick that up and send it back into oscillation or bring it around one more time um, until it hits the proper color pins to oscillate in the right direction. Uh, this uh, mock-up, yes, I, I am aware it does look like an umbrella with urine falling out from underneath it, which uh, some days it definitely feels like uh, it's only raining on you and it might be urine coming out from under an umbrella but it's meant to show the direction of the reflector projecting light being opposite uh, of the positional pin. And some examples of the positional pin not quite clearing the um, expected side for oscillation and how that will just send it back uh, on a slightly longer oscillation path uh, versus uh, a rotational command uh, causing the pin to pass um, past the expected sides pins is going to just continue that rotational command until it has satisfied uh, its requirements. So you can almost pretend like the other sides pins aren't there because uh, it's looking to uh, strike its uh, home side again in order to go into an oscillation mode. Oscillate front and oscillate back are not really different animals other than the speed, and the arc in which they oscillate is more of an analog of the speed rather than it is actually uh, the amount of time that it spins the worm gear although there might be a slight variation there. But as you can see here, um, like I said, the um, giving the command to full rotate, then withdrawing it um, back to an oscillation command, um, how that behaves is going to depend on how far you get that positional pin within those position sensing Ys. And Sometimes um, when, when you're doing that, you can think you're in a spot that you're really not because uh, the gap between the two Ys is actually much smaller than in this illustration. But again, it's just kind of ignoring one side of it um, and searching for the side it wants uh, when you've passed the proper... Um, portions of the sensors in order to create oscillation. 
Again, here's a look at how reversing the polarity and the logic for uh, the device works in order to create the desired function. Uh, so I went ahead and swapped the uh, Y sensors. Um, I moved the uh, left to right, right to left, uh, the green to blue, blue to green. Um, and if my theory is correct, then what you should end up with is a fast oscillation to the rear and a slow oscillation to the front, which is exactly what we got here. We got the slower rear oscillation to the front and the faster uh, front oscillation to the rear, uh, suggesting that those, uh, those pins act the way we think they do. I guess if you ever wanted to just not turn your whole stingray around, um, you could do this. Uh, but again, the pins are really, really fragile. I was worried about breaking them, taking them out. I had to be very careful. Um, but it was interesting to see that uh, you could make that change by reversing them just like you should. But don't worry, I got the bar put back together. Uh, it works as it should. Uh, it still displays all the functions it should. It still uh, is back to oscillating wide or slow sweep to the rear. Um, it's still back to having a 360 rotator. And of course, uh, everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, favorite uh, option, the uh, fast oscillate to the front is well intact. Um, None of it was broken or harmed in this experiment. Um, but it is a nice uh, look at both what these did, how they worked, and how they were less smart rotators than multifunction rotators, uh, utilizing um, the reverse polarity of a 12 volt brushed motor. Uh, in conjunction with some position sensors in order to get uh, the oscillation that was uh, required of the product. As always, please post any corrections, comments, questions, and uh, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks.